an old craftsman lawnmower, hot rod or industrial art. William Hobie Smith, 2023. This is Hobie Smith, the backyard sportsman. And we have lawnmowers again. And what we are concerned with is this old craftsman here. Uh, this is an ancient lawnmower. It belonged to my brother-in-law. And he since passed away. And I thought about maybe rebuilding the thing. Well, this engine is missing some vital parts, including the gas tank and other things that you'll see. And the thought occurred to me, well, maybe I could put a replacement engine on it. Well, I started to look at the price of engines. And no, uh, these things were running uh, much more than uh, any possible use of the lawnmower could be. So, I happened to be by Atlanta and there's a guy who sells stuff out of his front yard. And he picks up some good stuff from time to time. Including this lawnmower right here for $150. Period. Uh, this is made by a company called MTD and it's made in the U.S. It has a Briggs & Stratton engine on it. As a matter of fact, Briggs is the parent company of this whole group. And it sells right now for about $250. Hmm. So, uh, I got it for 150, 100 bucks less than selling price usually. And it's brand new. We did start it and run it, so I know it runs. Well, what are the options? That's the cheapest engine I can buy. Whew. We could take that engine off then we would have to alter this. There is a problem with the control mechanisms of the newer mowers with this handle bit, which means I would have to modify the grip here and this safety device uh, considerably to fit. In short, I would have to put this on the forge bend it down like that and straighten it up again because there's almost three inches difference between this diameter and this diameter. Hmm. Well, that gets to be a lot of trouble. And uh, when you're dealing with forging, yeah, you'll get it something that will work eventually, but uh, would it be really worth it? There's also the problem of holes lining up between this engine and that one. So we'd have to drill holes in the frame of this. And uh, we can see about that and see if that would possibly work. And I don't know about detaching the blades from the underside, but I assume they must be reasonably removable. Because lawnmower blades, yeah, they have to be replaced from time to time. So, uh, we're considering the alternatives. One, take all the steel off this and just leave this as a piece of industrial art and sell it for that. Or, take a perfectly good lawnmower by an American maker and maybe run it. Hmm. Okay. What to do? Looking now more closely at the craftsman, someone before had actually taken the cutting assembly off and unbolted the engine. 
and somehow or other managed to lose the gas tank. So, well, no more engine. That's simple. Now, so far as the rest of the frame, there are three mounting bolts on it, uh, like triangular. Engine, the other engine has four bolts, more or less one, two, three, four, maybe one hole would be uh, coincidentally useful there. I'll give you a close-up here. Uh, like most modern lawnmower engines, this one has more plastic on it than they used to by a long shot. Uh, the usual things like air filters and so on. As much as I would get a kick out of restoring Charles's old lawnmower and Cutting his yard with it. Uh, no. If that engine had been a Chinese engine on a Chinese machine, I would have probably put it on here and just taken the risk. But being an American made machine, or an American assembled machine anyway, uh, yeah, I fear those are going to get rare too. So, we'll just break this one down for art. Economically, by far the most reasonable and safest decision. Our first task is going to be uh, to attempt to remove that handle assembly. And we put a little light oil on the other side, and that actually seemed to work. Once you take the wheel covers off, they're held on by cotter keys. And rust, apparently. <laughs> Okay. Now this has a nut on the other side. Surprisingly, this is breaking free fairly easily. I guess a guy doesn't feel right unless he gets out every tool in his toolbox, so... Okay, assorted wrenches. Let's see what we got here. Okay, that takes care of this side. Again, we're going to need to move the wheel before we can get at the other, I'm pretty. Yeah. That plastic wheel was just rust bonded on that axle. And that was what was holding it.
We've had warning showers and heavier rain is threatened. So consequently I'm going to consolidate things inside on the workbench to keep my tools dry. And what we've done is we've now been able to remove the uh, handles here. And these are the studs they attach to right there and there. And now that this bar is removed from this side, I was able to pull it free right easily. Now have our relic from the age of aluminum uh, ready. All the steel parts have been removed except for the nameplate, the screws containing it, and I did leave the little rubber bumper on front. Now you'll notice that originally it had a coating obviously of red paint. Well, Paint on aluminum is notoriously difficult to keep and to repaint this as an art object actually reduces its value. Now, if you buy it, you may well paint it and be welcome to it, guys. But so far as value is concerned, it's better left in its original worn and slightly painted condition. We direct our attention to our other mold here and get it ready to actually run and yeah uh, we're going to take it over and test it on my brother-in-law's grass. We check the oil we put gas in it you'll notice that prominent red button uh, we push that five times to give it a little prime. And now we will see if we can get something to happen.